is a really versatile fish. You can prepare it almost any way. But here in the Chow Test Kitchen, we found that baking it is the most foolproof way. Our baked breaded salmon recipe is easy and fast enough for a weeknight dinner, but also impressive enough for a dinner party. Before you start cooking, you really need to find a great piece of fish. A good way to start is to do a little research at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. It's a good guide to find out what's sustainable, what's available, and what's in season where you live. When you get to the fish counter, you need to find the freshest piece of fish that you can. And the easiest way to do that is to have the guy hand it to you and just take a sniff. And it may seem weird to do this, but just get over it and do it. And it should smell fresh, like it just came out of the sea, not like a stinky old piece of fish. This salmon right here is a 20 ounce skin on filet, and this will feed about three or four people. And don't be afraid of the skin. You're actually not gonna eat the skin. It just helps the fish stay together when you're preparing it and putting on the topping. Also, if you have frozen fish in your freezer, you can use it, but it's not the best. It won't bake up quite as nice as a fresh piece. It's a little more watery, a little mushy, but if you really want to use that piece of fish up, it will work in this recipe too. Before you start cooking, you have to check for pin bones. And pin bones are exactly what they sound like. They're pokey, needly little bones that are stuck in the fish. You can find them by rubbing your hand up and down the filet. And if you find them, just take some needle nose pliers and pull them out. Then you just pat it dry with some paper towel, take a baking sheet, line it with some foil, and take a little bit of oil and just rub it around about the size of your piece of fish, and then just set the fish on there and put it aside. Now you're gonna make your topping. It's just two teaspoons of olive oil, four teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon of freshly chopped Italian parsley. Put that all in a little bowl together and stir it up. Now you grab your fish, and you need to season it with salt and pepper. And then you take your mustard topping and spread it all over the salmon and just use your fingers. You don't need to use spatula or spoon or any of that business. And then just sprinkle on three tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs. I like panko because they're lighter and flakier in texture than regular breadcrumbs. And that's it. You just put it in the oven at 425 for about 12 to 15 minutes. If your filet is a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, it might take a minute more or a minute less, but you can check its doneness using an instant read meat thermometer. 135 to 140 degrees should be just right. But if you don't have a meat thermometer, just cut into the salmon a little bit, peek inside, it should be a little opaque and a little flaky. But don't worry if it's not cooked perfectly done. Salmon's kind of like steak, where if it's a little bit rare on the inside, it's still delicious and still safe to eat. Also, if your breadcrumbs aren't quite as brown as you want them to be, just put the salmon under the broiler for about a minute or two. Don't have to worry, you're not gonna overcook the salmon. It's just gonna get the breadcrumbs nice and brown. To serve it, just cut your salmon up into pieces and then take a spatula and stick it between the meat and the skin. Lift it up and just leave the skin behind. Salmon is such a flavorful fish and this recipe really complements it. You get all the flavor from the mustard, the crunchy panko breadcrumbs, and the fresh parsley without overpowering the salmon flavor at all. And that's it, the easiest way to cook salmon.